We begin today chapter six. Chapter six in one word is Umas, the opposite. You know, the term self-esteem, self-fulfillment are definitely words that are bantied around. Definitely words that are um, expressed in um, in a sense of um, finding yourself, finding truth, um, being your better self, and so on and so forth. Uh, how does that fit in with Jewish teachings? We'll see today. All right, so King Solomon, the wisest of all men, said that the Almighty created one thing opposite the other. The simple understanding is that there needs to be an equilibrium between in creation in order that there's ultimate freedom of choice. So if holiness was the only uh, venue, well, we wouldn't have freedom of choice. So there has to be an equilibrium. What we learned in chapters 2, 3, 4, and 5 was about the godly soul. Chapter 1, we learned that there's, the bottom line, two souls. Chapter 2, we started with the godly soul, that it is a chilek, a part of God. Chapter 3, its qualities are 10, 10 uh, components of soul, being a part of God, that God has ten, uh, ten divine attributes, three intelli intel of intelligence, Chabad, and seven emotions. And then chapter four, we learn about the garments of the soul, meaning the self-expression of the soul that is even ultimately greater than the soul's love of God itself. And then chapter five, the uniqueness of Torah and how we're bound up in one with God in a unique manner through the study of Torah. Now we go to Umas. We go to the opposite side. We go to the opposite of the godly soul, which uh, right now we'll call the animal soul slash vital soul. And now we need to understand its makeup. Why do we need to understand it? Because otherwise, we don't know our, ourselves. Now what's interesting over here is one of the I know now that is that you know in in the teachings of the sages you might um, you might oh low audio as much okay let's see if that's something of my doing over here give me a moment if my volume speakers no tell me if that's better is the volume better no yeah we know yours is normal okay wonderful okay um so you might understand, you know, that we have a good inclination and an evil inclination. It is different because I'm using my computer today. Instead, I'm trying something different to see um, how it would be. So check your volume, folks. Okay. See, it looks like it's fine. Okay. Um, so you might look at it as just different inclinations because the sages speak about it in such a manner. But the Alta Rebbe brings out the no, there's a, a, just as the godly soul, we learned about the essence of it, the makeup of it, its self-expression in the chapters two, three, four. Um, likewise, the animal soul, the opposite, right, is also got a full structure. It's not just an inclination. It's got a full structure. The parallel is the divine soul. Right? The difference is the substance of the godly soul is godliness. The substance of the of this soul is uh, klipa. Sitrachar is a shell that covers over on. So it's got 
also ten powers of its soul, three, intelle uh, uh, three intellectual, and seven emotional. The difference is uh, called ten crowns of impurity. What, what does that mean? It's just like a king who sits on his throne, and you have another king that sits on his throne. No one makes space for each other, because each king wants to rule. That's the concept of impurity, right? That each wants to rule, complete rulership for its own. So chesed wants to express itself, kindness wants to express itself in like lust, complete rulership. Anger, complete rulership. That's severity of the, uh, of the animal soul, right? Anger. It wants complete you know, self-expression within the individual. Boastfulness, which would be the opposite of tiferes, of beauty, right? Boasting of yourself, beautifying yourself, right? These all come, as we explained in chapter one, from the four elements of the, of negative, of four elements of the world, right? So boastfulness is air, anger is fire, lust is water, and slothfulness is earth. Now, we mentioned that there's also, we have intelligence and emotions. From the godly soul, the intelligence on top is supposed to feed the heart. And by your understanding of your purpose, the understanding of what God needs you for, and your relationship with God, God within the world, that will bring you to feelings in the heart towards God and towards your purpose and so on but here it works the opposite you got a feeling in the heart and because the intelligence is on a certain level so therefore your feelings will be based on that so it's not um, a direct product of engaging your mind to bring something into your heart here it is for example a child who desires loves right which is chesed of the soul, kindness, love, um, petty things, things that are not valuable. Why? Because the intelligence is immature. The intelligence matures, then you desire, you know, adult toys, right? Bicycle, then a car, and so on. So it is all... Um, it is all based on the intelligence that feeds the emotions. But the feeding of the emotions over here is not proactive. It is, you know, you mature and therefore just naturally you're going to desire other things than you desired when you were a child, right? But the alternative explains that these are all considered um, impure garments of expression of thought, speech, and action. So whether it is a child who uh, desires, uh, you know, a candy, or it's an adult who desires sushi, or a car, or vacation. These are all impure garments of the animal soul that we act, speak, and think about. Now, what... So what does that include? Like, you know, when we think about the animal soul, when you think about the impure garments of self-expression, so we think about negative bad things. So here is a, a chiddush, a novel thing that the Alter Rebbe says, that no, actually, vanity and affliction of the spirit is of all things that are not directed towards God and his will and serving God in our self-expression of thought, speech, and action. What, what does that mean? It means anything that we think, that we speak, and that we do, that is not directed in the divine service of God. So in other words, there isn't an awareness that's coming through, you know, a desire to devote yourself to God in this thought in this words and these actions so the vitality where's it coming from where where's it coming within me it's coming from my 
from Klippo, from my animal soul, right? That does it mean you did something bad here? No, not at all. It could be something actually very nice, but it wasn't directed towards God. It was directed towards me um, and my desire, what I like, what I want. So I speak this, I do this, or I think this because it suits me, because I want to. I want to because it fulfills me, whatever. And again, it could be a wonderful thing that you're doing, right? You're bringing food to people. You're bringing, right? So does that mean it's a bad thing? You're bringing food for Shabbos for people. That's a wonderful thing. But if it is based on self-fulfillment, uh, self-realization, if it's based on, uh, um, you know, feeling good about yourself, so that's not to, directed towards God. It doesn't, it, we're not talking about the act. The action could be a mitzvah. Ab absolutely, the mitzvah, it could be a mitzvah that you're doing in the sense, um, you know, Actually, let me, let me refine that. Um, you could be doing an act of loving kindness. It's possible. And you're doing it not directed to connect yourself to God. Not in order that you are, and, and, and this is what the alternative explains, only that which nullifies itself to the will of God surrenders to God. Bittel, as it's called in Hebrew, right? So if you're doing it in order to surrender to do the will of God, then God can dwell there. So it's possible to do something and, you know, not be motivated by the um, by the will of God, not to connect to God, so you can do an act of loving kindness, right? If it's to connect, to do, because this is what God needs from me, this is what um, my calling is, therefore I'm surrendering to the will of God. Then God dwells within me. That's why even if we were just one individual studying Torah right now, or many together, but if we were just one individual studying Torah, you know what? God would dwell amongst us, and all the more so with a, a, a large group, right? Um, because I'm surrendering my will to do the will of God. Now, the two wills don't have to be mutually ex exclusive of each other, but usually, let, let's be quite, you know, honest with ourselves. I want to do what I want because it makes me feel good. It fills me. I feel fulfilled when I do what I want for good, obviously, you know, for good, right? Um, and that's okay. That's fine. But this greater way to live is to be able to put ourselves aside to fulfill what God needs of me. And when I do that, then I'm making a place for God to dwell within me. I'm making a place where my vitality is coming from a divine place rather than coming from Klippa, Sitar Achim. And this was, you know, Sitar Achim means the other side. Other side, it's interesting. It, 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 what's it mean the other side? It means there's holy side, and God creates another side. That other side is a no-namer. It's got like it's a no-name brand because it doesn't have a true reality. Because the true reality is really only God. And therefore, when I make space for him within me, then God dwells within me, within my soul, giving me vitality from him. Something more about that we'll get into. It's more about that concept of vitality. Right? So when I'm thinking words of Torah to make space for God within my thoughts, speaking words of Torah or prayer, or an action, right? 
Now, what's with all of the things that we do that are, you know, of a mundane activity? Well, of course, they can be directed to God. Something we'll speak more about also, right? It doesn't mean eating breakfast can't be. It doesn't mean um, doing business can't be. Absolutely. It can also be fulfilling what God needs of me, what he wants of me, that I'm making space for him. Now, of course, that means acting the way you're supposed to act in business, speaking the way you should speak in business, right? So obviously, you know, there's not going to be any um, negativity. You know, you're not going to get angry at somebody because they didn't do what you want. Well, at that moment, you know, you didn't make space for God. You made space for your own fulfillment, your own awareness, your own, you know, desire this is what we're talking about um, it's a profound idea okay so Raymond has an, a question when we perform a mitzvah that is based on the needs of another we are responsible for such as an ill parent how are we sure that we're performing the deed for your Hashem's sake. Um, what about working because we need parnasa? To make, we need livelihood to take care of others, to give tzedakah, because we must work, and we uh, and we work uh, for someone who is not such a mensch. Uh, thank you for your excellent question. So, uh, as we just mentioned, that you know, working doesn't mean you can't do it. Uh, you know, only for self-fulfillment, you know, you're doing it because that's what God needs for you. God needs you to work so you could take care of your family. Well, then you're connecting that to God. You're making space for Him. And here we're speaking specifically um, as, uh, you know, through, through the mitzvahs, right? So, yeah, it's a mitzvah to take care of your family. So that's what is inspiring you and that's what's directing you so it can come from the godly soul as opposed to the animal soul now to be quite frank you know the the fact that we're, we will get attuned to our godly soul well we'll learn more about it in chapters 18 19 will be when it will be fully of a flame because um we surrender in a time of martyrdom and sanctify god's name do we surrender now totally? Like, you know, for example, we're learning Torah right now. So there's no question that in the act that we're bound up with God in the act of studying Torah, there's no question. The question is, um, is this an expression of my godly soul or not? That is the question. So the surrender in the sense that I am here to fulfill what God needs of me, that is a surrender. In other words, if I'm merely coming because this makes me feel good, right? This is fulfilling for me. Um, then that's not a real surrender. So, I mean, the truth is, it, it's a not it's not an expression of the godly soul it can be an expression of the of our natural soul our you know our, our natural soul might be a little more refined as we mentioned um, a child desires you know uh, things that are not of value you your mind matures and because of the maturity of the mind now you desire things that are are meaningful so you want to have a fulfilling life. So you study Tanya. So that might not be the godly soul that's expressing itself. Which, by the way, that's better than not studying Tanya, right? Uh, um, based on that. But there's a deeper, and that is learning um, in order to have God Uh, being revealed through me, being connected to him, 
making a dwelling place for God, that God will dwell. So when there is that surrender, and that's the idea over here, um, that surrender is making space, making space for God to dwell in me. That's the idea. So, you know, are we surrendering and not surrendering? Uh, good question. You know, obviously the, the way we focus has a determination how much we're engaged or how much we're, you know, just um, kind of on autopilot. That's some of the things that we can check into. All right. So, by, but if you be quite honest, that I would be totally motivated by my divine soul uh, even to teach now? I don't know. That's, you know, that's okay. We're, uh, we're a work in progress. That even if it's my animal soul that is, um, you know, kind of motivates me to uh, to do what I'm doing, but wow, that's a much more refined animal soul than someone who is just, you know, motivated to to do for themselves uh, other things. So um, you know, it's not a, it's not a bad thing. It's not a wrong thing. It's. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm bad. I'm, I'm not trying to, it's just not a holy thing. The surrender is the holy thing. And that's something to be aware of and to strive towards. Right? Okay. All right, folks. You know what we want to do now? Or I want to do. <laughs> I hope you want to do this too. I know now that. I know, meaning I've integrated the teachings of today now. Not what I know from yesterday, but now from today's teachings, I know now that. So um, I'm writing this on a, I know now that and uh, I want you to share with me what do you know now based on what we learned today. And, uh, so Karen says, I know now that desiring your praise because of what I post is my animal soul. <laughs> but a post because Hashem was in relation and communication with the group, I surrender to the divine soul. Beautiful Karen. <laughs> that was very personal. Thank you for your vulnerability and to share that. That's beautiful. Denise says, I know now that my thoughts, deeds, and action can be fueled by Klippa and that I need to put my selfish motives aside for Hashem. I need to direct my divine soul towards Hashem. Psh, beautiful. <laughs> also personal and uh, making yourself vulnerable. That's beautiful. I really appreciate that. Who else is going to share? Eugenia says, I know now that it is not necessarily godly soul that motivates us to do good deeds. Excellent. Beautiful. Uh, Stan says, I know now that I need to learn a lot more. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes, we all do. We all do. Linda, I know now that surrendering to the divine soul instead of my own makes a difference for God to have a space within me. Excellent, Linda. Thank you. John says, I know now that it pays not to miss a class. The self knowledge can lead to comprehension. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, what else um, do you know? Uh, Rachel, I if I love all the parts of me, I will be I will be love its self. I know now. I'm not clear what you mean, Rachel. If I love the parts of me, I will be love itself. 
I'm not clear if you can clarify that, Rachel, please. Diane, I know now that it's that I have a lot to learn. Okay, thank you. Uh, Stephanie, I know now that I need to surrender all of my will to God. Yes, and, and that's a process. Please, you know, very important. I don't want to send you to the loony bin. Like, oh, oh, I didn't do this for God. I did this for me. You know what? If you're 35 years old, if you're 55 years old, or 75 years old, think about it. All those years, of course we're only doing for ourselves. That's the human condition. Here the alternative is saying, well, we have a godly soul, and and that and for it to express itself, it needs to we need to surrender to do that which God wants of me. That's a hard task. If for 35 years you haven't done it, 55 years, 75 years you haven't done it. So it's not going to happen overnight. That's okay. It's an awareness that we have. And then don't beat yourself up because, oh, I did that, you know, well, I did that for me. Don't beat yourself up about it. Recognize it and grow from there and move forward. That's okay. We are who we are. Right? And that's okay. God loves that, that we're making the effort and we're going to be hypocritical. God loves a hypocrite. Hypocrite means here that you didn't really become what you could become. Or you did become what you become, and usually not that. Usually self-directed. And here you did some, oh, hypocrite. Well, God loves that. And also when you tried, and yeah, you kind of got yourself involved there. That's okay. Don't worry. Clem. I know that I have to learn to become a bittle and serve Hashem with all my heart and soul. Yes, thank you. Gianna, yes, break, this is breaking news, absolutely. Fred, why is the fifth night of Hanukkah cannot follow on Shabbos? Because it just teaches us that sometimes Shabbos is a time of light. But there are moments that are not, there's no light. Of Shabbos, but yet the candles of the menorah will illuminate our lives. Okay. Okay. My best plan, says Carl, the plans and endeavors have to be to align with the will of Hashem. Yes, beautiful. Yes, absolutely. Okay, folks. This is uh, beautiful. Amazing. Um, give me a moment. Any other thoughts that uh, you might have to share? Feel free. Um, Maggie, I feel even that when I try, when, when we try, we can always try more. Does Hashem judge us on that? Meaning, we could have done more, but we didn't for whatever reason. Um, God is a loving God, and He sees that we're making the effort, and we're working towards growing and to, to align ourselves with Hashem's will, and loves that. That, that effort, think about how difficult that is. Think about how challenging that would be. Right? Um, that that's a very difficult challenge to rise above the human condition. The human condition is that we're self-directed. We are you know, we love ourselves. And um, we think about ourselves. Here we're talking about to think about what to align ourselves with the will of God, what God wants. Of course, it's going to be a challenge. So it's not about 
judgment. Don't worry about the judgment. Because the thinking about the judgment is thinking about myself. Thinking about what that I can do what God needs of me, wants of me. Then it's thinking about, you know, about about God. And my alignment and attachment to him. Yeah. Um, Malka Gittel Bas Ruvain. I know that I'm trying to do Hashem's will is more important than being perfect at it. Beautiful. Um, would you be interested to come online and to share this? Because for some reason, some people, it says, bring them on camera. And I have the capability of doing that. I have that for you, but I don't have that for others. Are you open to that? Just um, respond to that. I want to try this, something different. Um, so, uh, Malka Gittel Bas Rube. If you don't mind responding to that. Um, and then I'll try to put you on. And thank you, everybody, for your kind wishes and, and, and beautiful things that you say. Really appreciate it. Um, Okay, one last try from Alka Gittel. If not, that's okay. I understand. Um, but uh, uh, hello. Okay, fine. Not a problem. Sarah, would you be interested to come? Uh, I'm. For some reason, there are some people that come up. And it shows that they can come on camera, and others, and most most not. I don't know how this works. And if anybody knows and or can do some research and help me with this, because I would like to get m people on camera with me. Um, so, um, Sarah. Would you like to share something? And if not, I understand people being camera shy. Um, but maybe, you know, think about it. And again, I don't know how this is working, but um, who can get on, who can't get on? But this is the... Uh, Vilma, we can always do better, embracing the struggle. Is about connecting to Hashem and surrendering to His will. This life is meant to change and transform us for a better level soul. Excellent. Um, got you. Right. That's an option about the Zoom. Okay. Thank you, Karen. All right, folks. So that's it for today. Sharing is caring. Please share the Altered Abyss teachings with others. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Klein coming to you from. Chabad Zuchin Station, Montreal, Canada, where it's a privilege and pleasure to share with you, Tanya. Tonight is the last light. Zoys Hanukkah. This is Hanukkah. This is Hanukkah. It's called Zoys Hanukkah, the last day. Very special day. Make sure you light your menorah tonight. And uh, by the way, just a question. Would you be interested? Who would be interested to come on a daily Zoom and then put it on live on Facebook? Um, 
that's a new option that we might consider. Um, let me know if that works for you, or how that would work. Let us discuss. I'll you know, put it on the uh, on the discussion over here, and I'll look at it, and we'll uh, discuss further. All right, folks. Have a wonderful day. A wonderful end of Hanukkah, and may we be illuminated and warm, and become warm from the lights of the menorah. All the best.